and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today let us reflect on the promises Jesus made to those who would pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The first one, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image of Divine Mercy will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies, already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. What a powerful promise. What more do we need when Jesus said he would defend our souls just as his own glory? I desire that the Feast of Mercy be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion in a state of grace on this day shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. This is really important, my friends. All Jesus is asking for on this day, the first Sunday after Easter, he says, go to confession, cleanse yourself and receive Holy Communion. By this we get washed from our sins and we gain new life. By doing this, he says that the soul shall obtain complete, complete, complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Our sins are innumerable. We do need complete forgiveness of sins and punishment to go to heaven. The next promise, whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. My dear friends, there are a couple of promises that says that Jesus will show great mercy at the hour of death. And we would not realize this now because sometimes only on our deathbeds, at the hour of death, we, are re we realize what a sinful life we have lived. We think whether we are even qualified to go to heaven. But even at that very moment after living such a sinful life, Jesus says at that very last hour of our life, He will show great mercy. What a beautiful promise. The next one, priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy, I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Sometimes in life, you might be feeling that you've gone far, far away from God and there's no return. You might find that there is nothing that you can do to gain salvation. But here Jesus again promises that his mercy will be the last hope of sinners. The next promise, the souls that say this chaplet will be embraced by my mercy during their lifetime and especially at the hour of their death. So it's not only at the hour of our death, but Jesus promises that in our entire lifetime, we would be embraced with mercy. Sometimes, knowingly or unknowingly, we sin, we go away from God every second. And we are not worthy to be called His children. But Jesus promises that is mercy is throughout our lifetime and what more do we need the next promise 
souls would spread the honor of my mercy at the hour of death i will not be a judge for them but the merciful savior how beautiful is this friends sometimes we think that god would punish us for our sins sometimes we think how am i going to face god on the day of judgment but if you have embraced his mercy have given respect to this mercy that he is showering on us he promises us that he will not be a judge to us but the merciful savior imagine at the hour of judgment no one else is going to be there with us it's us and it's god judging us it's our conscience but what a comfort when jesus says that he will be there he will be a not a judge for us but the merciful savior what comfort amazing do not take god's mercy for granted but value and respect the mercy that he is showering the prayer most pleasing to me is prayer for the conversion of sinners no my daughter that this prayer is always heard and answered let us think about how often do we pray for sinners we do our sinners but just like us are our brothers and sisters our near and dear ones our family just as we don't want them to be lost here on earth if we really love and care for them you should be caring for those lost souls also pray for the conversion of sinners that they too may have eternal life if we are not doing so let us start to pray for these souls and for the conversion of sinners the next promise my mercy is greater than your sins and those of the entire world sometimes we feel that we have made infinite sins we have done so many things that displeases god and yes if we were to calculate and count everything it's too much there's nothing that we can even offer for th- as a atonement was a sacrifice for our sins but jesus says his mercy is more than our sins so no matter how sinful we are jesus is mercy is much more than that to forgive us the next promise to preach to proclaim and extol my mercy i will give wondrous power i will anoint their words and touch the hearts of those to whom they will speak so if at all you are a priest you are a religious maybe you should reflect and see how much are you proclaiming this divine mercy you are anointed therefore the words that come out from your mouth can touch so many hearts and jesus promises that he will anoint the words that come out so that it touches the hearts of whom you speak and this could even convert sinners could bring about change of life of the people that's something we need to think about The next promise through this chaplet you will obtain everything if you ask for is compatible with my will Sometimes we feel where, where, where would I go what would I do who am I to ask But here Jesus promises and says you will obtain everything but the only condition is if what you ask for is compatible with the will of god what comfort what guarantee jesus is giving us the next one when hardened sinners say it 
I will fill their souls with peace and the hour of death will be a happy one. All Jesus is asking for, just say this Divine Mercy Chaplet and He would provide peace. If we are sinners, definitely we can never be at peace because there is our conscience always convicting us. The more we turn to Jesus, the more peace we gain. And even at the hour of our death, it will be a happy one. The next one, when they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as a judge, but as a merciful savior. Here Jesus says that it's not only that you sit in your room and say the Divine Mercy Chaplet, go to the dying, pray for them, so that at that hour of death that they are facing, Jesus would be a merciful savior to them. There are so many people dying, unable to even say a word, unable to even open their eyes. They don't even know what's happening around them, but all they know that they are dying. And at that moment, you need to be there for them. In the, you need to be there for them, praying for them, so that they may have a happy and peaceful death and they may be with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and obtain His mercy. Jesus says, At three o'clock implore my mercy, especially for sinners, and if only for a brief moment immerse yourself in my passion, particularly in my abandonment in the moment of agony. I will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in virtue of my passion. Again, Jesus stresses on saying the Divine Mercy, especially at the 3 o'clock, the hour. Again, He promises so much, so much to us. And finally, Jesus speaks about the blood and water that gushed forth from Him. The two rays denote blood and water. These two rays issued from the very depths of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by a lance on the cross. These rays shield souls from the wrath of my Father. I desire that the first Sunday after Easter be the Feast of Mercy. Whoever approaches the fount of life on this day will be granted complete, complete remission of sins and punishment. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. So if you feel that you are lacking peace, turn to God's mercy. And Jesus is very definite saying that the rays that come out from his divine and merciful heart shall shield souls from the wrath of my Father. We take it very lightly. All these promises that we have seen, we might think, no matter whatever I do, whatever life I live, Whatever I think I want to do, at the end, at the last hour, if I implore that mercy, I would be saved. No. Do not take God's mercy, Jesus' mercy, for granted. And as much as Jesus is a merciful Savior, He is a just God. And He clearly says that God will pour out His wrath on sin. And if we cling to sin, we become a sinner and we are also destined to suffer the wrath of God. So my dear friends, let us take these promises to our heart and start having a devotion to this divine mercy and obtain all these promises of Jesus. Amen.